I'm going to talk to you real quickly about something that we've done. We've partnered with, with a company, and I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. We, we've partnered with a company to help you guys create lists, to help you guys uh, mail, and to help you guys do searches on properties. So a lot of you guys come to us and you say, hey, listen, you have access to the MLS. Can you, can you comp this property? And we do that for you. That's no problem. We'll still do it for you. No problem. But there's a program out there that, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm totally honest with you, I never looked at it before. I heard other people talk about it. They called us. I didn't even call them. They called us, and they said, you guys are a school. You guys should be using our program. And you guys know me, right? I don't, nobody comes into the school and presents, and nobody presents anything to my students unless I know it's really good. So I said, all right, but I got to see it first. So this guy does a demo on this thing, and in five minutes I'm like, oh, I can't believe we haven't been using this. So with that, I want to talk to you about the next guy who's going to be talking to you. His name is Burton Alicando. He's a senior product specialist for PropStream, and PropStream is the company that we're going to be talking to you about. Uh, he's, uh, he's also the user and trainer customer experience guy. He's passionate about real estate. He's a technical expert. And he's helped hundreds of prop screen clients daily. Before he comes on, I created a link for you guys. PropStream7daysfree.com. So the link is exactly what it says. PropStream7daysfree.com. You don't have to put your credit card in. You don't have to do anything. Just go to PropStream7daysfree.com, and you can download the, the, the app, use it for seven days for free. And if you never use it again, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. All right, everybody say a little burden. Give him a round of applause. All right, and Burton, the screen is yours. Yeah, thank you guys so much. So as you guys embark on this journey, first and foremost, I want to thank you for even taking the time and having the courage to get where you're at now. Uh, the reason I say that is uh, when it comes to real estate investing, uh, you're actually going to be out there solving other people's problems. Like that's where the, the profit comes in, right? So you're going to be helping, you know, single fathers, single mothers, families that need to upgrade, families that are in financial trouble, uh, families that are about to lose their properties to a bank, you're going to be helping them. So I want to give you guys a round of applause first and foremost. But let's talk about PropStream and where it fits into the real estate investing world. In the world of real estate, there's two main aspects that need to be done. The first aspect is what we call lead generation. You got to get that phone call to ring. In order to do that, you got to generate leads. These are properties that have a high pro propensity of motivation, meaning the person living in that property, owns that property, is more willing to sell at a lower price than a property that's on the market with an agent that wants full price, right? It's called finding distress properties, and our system can help you with that. The reason why I say that is our system provides this information and we've been collecting data nationwide. So can you guys see my little um, chart here with the little bubbles by chance? So this chart right here is just a sample of the data that we have sitting in our server. We have mortgage data, we have MLS data. So Larry just mentioned it earlier, you know, his team is going to help you guys run comps, but let's say you get a phone call in the middle of the night and his team is not awake. You could use our system to do what his team is doing for you, right? So you don't have to wait ultimately. You can use our system to see if a property has a mortgage, see if a property has filed for a divorce, a bankruptcy. This is what people are using PropStream for. Now, why is that? Why is having this data import in the real estate world? Well, when you're a real estate investor, you're going to need to be a credible investor. Not only are you going to need to be a credible investor, but you need to make sure you know what you're talking about, right? And you also got to make sure you're able to qualify if that homeowner and, and the situation that they're in is even worth your time or not. And that's where our system comes into play. Before PropStream showed up, investors like you guys would have to physically go grab data from somewhere, right? Like you could stare at a house right now, but there's no way for you to know how many bedrooms or bathrooms are in that property. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, Bert, I could just go online and find that out. Yeah, because the technology is there today. But could you imagine an investor 20 years ago before PropStream when someone called them and said, yeah, I want to sell my house. You knew nothing about their property and you had to go on a scavenger hunt. And that's what we did. All those little data points I just showed you, 
is the scavenger hunt. We went out there for you. And so now for the first time ever, if you did, let's say, have a lead already, let's say you heard your cousin, sister's brother wanted to sell their house because they wanted to, to move out of state as soon as possible. We got you covered. And here's how PropStream works. We grabbed all that data that I just showed you right here, all this data that's been collected from different providers. So let's assume every one of you guys is one of these providers here. We have an account with each one of you guys, and we're paying every one of you guys for that data and bringing it to us. So now we're the person in the room with all that data. And the reason why we did this is so that when you go into PropStream, and we're a nationwide data provider, if someone were to call you right now or your brother's sister's cousin's cousin's cousin says, hey, I'm looking to sell my property, you just need to search their address in the search bar or you can just zoom in on the map. Let's say to uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, which I don't, I've never been and I don't think I'm ever going to go to, but I can zoom in onto this market and add a click of a button bring up a property's detail and go into the details and talk to Lloyd, the homeowner, and everything about his property that I know is present. I know how many beds and bathrooms his house has. I know how old his house is. It's about nearly 100 years old. Maybe that's why he wants to sell because I'm sure a 90-year-old building is going to start showing its signs. So what we've done is gather this data so you don't have to go do that. So you just focus on calling homeowners or when they call you back, going into the details and talking to them about their two bedroom, one bathroom property, right? Hey, Lloyd, thank you for giving me a call back or thanks for you know answering my postcard and calling me back. As you may know, I'm interested in buying your property. I have a few questions about your property, Lloyd. I understand you're looking to get a good price on it, but I'm seeing here in my records, it's about 80 years old. When's the last time you did the roof on your property? Have you done any of the windows? How's the, the ceiling? Is it still that popcorn ceiling? Because we're going to need to get rid of that, right? And so now I'm able to use this data to see the condition of the property from a different state. I'm in California, by the way, right? I can ask, hey, I see it's a two-bedroom, one-bathroom. Is that why you're needing to sell? Do you need to upgrade? Maybe I hear kids running in the background. That could be the reason to sell. Yeah, you know, we just have a new newborn baby and we need a bigger place. So what we've done is collected property details. So you now know the owner's name. And if there's a different mailing address, we're going to show you that. Their property characteristics. So you can talk to them about what's, you know, their property's condition and all the stuff that's being used for that property. Even the land and location information and I think it's important, but I know what zoning that property is in. Some of your buyers find that import, uh, information very important. And I know what school district he's in. Hey, Lloyd, did you go to Fredericksburg City Public School District by chance? Oh, you did? Great. Well, I, you know, just wondering why. I'm like, oh, you know what? My cousin's neighbor's friend, if I did, told me about you. And I think he went to the same school. All right, what's his name? Oh, yeah, there we go. Right, Building that relationship. Because you're not just going to offer someone a price and they're just going to take it. You, you got to build that relationship. This is probably the biggest transaction in the, in the world, I would say, real estate. And so you got to make sure that you're building that relationship. Because when you make that offer, it's usually an offer not at full price. Uh, you don't want to offend anybody, right? So what better way to start off by building rapport? And that's using that data. So whether it's property details, tax information, other properties that they owned, how many mortgage they currently have on the property. This one doesn't have any mortgages, which is a good sign. This is what we call free and clear property, meaning I don't need to pay, a, uh, pay for a mortgage. I can technically offer this homeowner $1,000 for the property. Now, are they going to take $1,000 is, is a different question, right? Probably not, but I'm sure there's a price uh, that we compromise on, right? But how do I know what the max price is? Well, that's another thing PropStream can provide you. So in the property details, not only can we tell you all about the property, the owner's information and their taxes and how many other properties they have and their mortgage information, but we have a comping section as well. Comping is essentially looking at sold data in the market 
of properties within a half a mile or one mile, right? Like if you're going to sell um, a, a car, a 1998 Honda Civic with 100,000 miles on it, are you going to show people 2021 Honda Civics? No, that makes no sense. They're not comparables. That's what this area is for. I can go into the comparables area and this whole bottom area changes. It al allows me to see the comparables, what's sold and was recorded at the county. That's what we call public records or what's sold through an agent. Hey, look at that. I'm not even an agent in this market and I have access to the realtor's information. Or we can use both of those data sets together. So this is the big the first or second part, however you want to look at it. Like if you have a lead, I guess this is the first part, but this is one side of the real estate world, which is someone's going to call you. Trust me, someone will call you if you embark on this journey about selling their property and you need to know everything about that property as soon as possible. So whether it's a property in Fredericksburg, Virginia, or maybe you search Dallas, Texas, we're a nationwide platform. You can go to Dallas and do the same thing. Zoom in on that market, click on a property. And now in an instant, I know everything about this property. Hey, Campbell. Hey, Nancy. Thanks for calling me. I'm interested in buying your property. Oh, I see you have one bathroom. How's that working out? Yeah, that's why we want to sell. Our kids are growing up and uh, they keep hogging up the bathroom. Oh, okay, well, now's the time to sell. But I'm seeing that your property is 70 years old. Well, Burton, that's why we called you. and We didn't call a realtor instead because our property has a huge hole in the roof. Well, I'd like to give you full price on your property, but let me see what we can do for you. Now I can run comps and see what a full price property looks like. Like here's a property that sold for 379, right? We have filters here. So we do have filters that will allow you to look for specific properties. So her property is a three bedroom, one bathroom. I'm gonna look for a three bedroom, one bathroom. Now I can see all the three bedrooms, one bathroom, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Let's just put one in the max. We can just see one bedroom properties. Now I can negotiate, right? She just told me the house has a huge hole in the roof. And this homeowner, not an investor, probably wants full price just like everybody does, right? Who doesn't? They love this house. They're going to want full price, even though it's falling apart, right? Who can't blame them. But now I can negotiate. I can say, hey, look, Campbell. Nancy, I love to buy your property, but there is a huge hole in the roof. You know, you keep asking for full price, which is about $400,000 right now in your market for their property with similar characteristics. But that $400,000 is fully renovated, right? So we can show them the actual photos of what sold. And that's going to help my negotiation because if they have a huge hole in the wall, well, Here's a property without a hole in the wall. And that property sold for $356,000. So it doesn't make sense that you want more than 356 and you have a hole in the wall, right? I might as well just give this person my money because they don't have a hole in the wall, right? The whole concept is I'm going to buy your property at a reasonable price and then potentially rehab it or sell it to someone who's going to rehab it and then make money in the back end. If I buy this house that's falling up for 356 and then I have to put money into it, let's say $40,000, well, we're now in the $390,000 range. I could barely sell this house for $400,000, meaning I'm going to do all that work for 10,000 bucks. No, makes no sense. So that's what I can explain to the homeowner. I could say, Hey, you know, based on the condition that you're telling me this house would sell for 350, 360 or more. If it was fully rehab, Nancy, Mr. Campbell, uh, but because it's not fully rehab, you know, it's about maybe 60%, 50% from being, you know, fully completed. I'd like to offer you 150,000 cash or 180,000 cash or 200,000 cash, right? But here's where you got to be careful. And this is the power of data. We have mortgage data collected. See, so I, I can't just make that offer because they don't have they have a high mortgage balance. If I offer them 200,000, what do you think they're going to do on the phone? Hang up because it doesn't cover the mortgage. And this is the power of having prop stream is that now I can say, okay, well, even though they're motivated, I can't do this strategy. I have to do this strategy instead.
because it has very high equity or low equity. And that's the fun part about real estate is that there's so many different strategies. Larry's going to teach you several good ones, but there's many out there to solve a person's situation. And we have the data to guide you on which strategy is best suited for that scenario. And we have the data to help you uh, essentially justify your offer is ultimately the case. Like if I'm going to tell this homeowner, I'm not going to give you full price. I can now show them why full price, like a 324 looks like this. Your house looks nothing like that. There's a trash on the floor. There's dog poop on the floor. There's dead rodents on the floor. Doesn't make sense that you're asking for $400,000 when these house that look like this are selling for 350. All right. So there's no comparison there. So this is vetting a property with prop stream. This is one of the biggest things that you're going to do when you're embark on this, in this industry. The other thing that's very important that we can help provide and Larry preluded, uh, preluded to it earlier is generating leads. So, okay, Burton, you just showed me how to pull up a property and talk to the homeowner about their characteristics and see if it has a mortgage I need to worry about and how to look at the local sales to see what the property could sell for after it's been rehabbed. But what if I don't have a property? What do I do then? Well, then you use us to search a market. You go into the search bar and instead of typing an address, type in a city or a state like Colorado Springs. And I'm purposely jumping from one city to another just so you guys can see we don't limit you. But you can search Colorado Springs, Colorado and boom. I mean, you didn't have an address to search. That's fine. There's 200,000 records that you can use in our database. And of those 200,000 records, here's just a few categories that are going on within them. Right? If you want to deal with an agent, then here are the 3,500 properties listed with an agent. Here are the 35 properties that are in pre-foreclosure or have an auction going up or they're owned by the bank now called foreclosure or bank owned. You want to see if there's any cash buyers you can sell your contract because you're going to wholesale to. Here's your cash transactions. And that's because of all of that data collection. See, back in the day, if you wanted to build a list, you either go knock on every door on the block and see who wanted to sell, or the other next best bet is you had to go walk to the county's office and grab one of this piece of information, right? That's what we're doing. We're getting all the property details and financial stuff. So when you search an address, that's there for you to look at. But we're also grabbing that data so you can use it for this other half, which is, hey, I'm going to build some leads in this area. So go to Colorado Springs and we have a filter you can use. And in our filter, we have 19 possible categories you can choose from to get started. So for example, maybe you want to look for all the senior owners, maybe all the senior owners that don't live in their house and it's vacant, meaning that there's nobody renting the house. Nobody's answering their mail. This is maybe their second or third or fourth vacant home that they just happen to have. That's why they want to sell it because they're at that age where it's time to either give it up to your kids, but if you don't have any kids, hello, I can help you out here. How about I make you offer it on that property? Or maybe it's a person who didn't pay their taxes, a tax delinquent property, right? So we can see tax delinquent properties. Maybe it's a person who filed a pre-fork or isn't a pre-foreclosure. And that's the fun part with PropStream. We've done the hard work. You just go in here and build your leads or search that address. Now, when it comes to building leads, just a few best practices for you guys. Make sure that you make sure it's off market. Like that's the biggest tip I can give you guys is no matter what list you choose here, let's say properties that have a lien on them. Maybe they didn't pay their taxes or maybe they didn't pay the homeowners association or maybe they did a, a roof job and they didn't pay their contractor. That's what a lien is, is that if you don't pay your dues, a lien is on your property and that lien can turn into a pre foreclosure. So this is a pretty bad scenario here, but you can now look for liens that are what we call MLS status off market, meaning it's not listed with an agent. So instead of calling an agent and trying to negotiate with it, I can just talk to the homeowners directly. When I talk to a homeowner directly, I can negotiate a good price, right? Because usually agents will have a set price on the contract when you're dealing with them. 
when you're dealing directly with the homeowner, well, there's room for negotiation. And that's what most investors are doing in our system is when they pick a list, they'll make sure it's off market. So that's a tip I'm gonna give you guys here. And another thing is make sure it has equity. So for those that don't know what equity is, uh, I'm not to be a, that guy, but equity is obviously the difference between what you owe left on the property and what that property could sell for. So if I owe $50,000 left on my mortgage, but that house could sell for $200,000, that $150,000 difference, that's called equity. That's also called profit. And that's where you can make your money. So what a lot of investors do in PropStream is they'll go to our equity area here and they'll put a minimum. They'll say, hey, you know, okay, if the house is here are $400,000, then I wanna make sure that the equity is 50% or more, meaning that their mortgage is under $200,000. So I can offer them 250 or 300,000 for that $400,000 house. And so these are the best tips I'm gonna give you guys here. Just make sure it's off market unless you wanna deal with an agent and apply that equity amount, right? And then you guys can choose a list, in this case, a lien list. And as you see here, when I hit close, I have 1,700 possible leads that I can now extract from PropStream or PropStream has what we call skip tracing. Very powerful feature. Skip tracing is taking this list that I just built and running it through our third party providers. And within five or like two to three minutes actually, they're gonna give me a cell phone, a landline or an email that's been recorded on this homeowner. So that's so powerful because it's very affordable. It's only 12 cents per address if it gets results. If it doesn't, we don't charge you. But instead of just pulling a list of addresses, I can pull a list of addresses and phone numbers and call them right now and actually get someone on the phone over like on the phone now and see if they want to sign a contract. And with technology and DocuSign and all that, like I can flip a property in a different state without even seeing it, right? All because I have that data in front of me. So that's the two biggest aspects of CropStream is I have a lead already, so I can use PropStream to see the details and see if it has a mortgage and see what it could sell for, as well as this, what I just showed you now, go into Colorado Springs, go into our filter, find that motivated homeowner that you can talk to and negotiate with. And then from there, once you have your list built, you can check them off, you can export them and get phone numbers or Larry mentioned it earlier, we have this area called campaigns where you can set up like a, a marketing campaign. And as you can see here, I have different campaigns already set up because I'm doing this on my own, but I have like an auctions campaign where I took a list of these auction properties over here. You see these auctions right over here, these 13, I saved them and then I ran a campaign where I get to create a website for them. I, this website says, hey guys, I can buy your house in 30 days before the auction, pretty much. And there's a, a name and email phone number area that they, it's a landing page, pretty much. If we get it, some of us don't wanna talk to people all the time. So let's create a place they can go to. So I can build this list in PropStream, save it, market to it, and then send out marketing components to them. And it's not just postcards, we have ringless voicemails, which are currently disabled right now uh, until further notice. A lot of political stuff going on in the marketing world of, um, of real estate. Don't wanna get too much involved or that. But if you wanna know more, it's called the Traced Act, like you're tracing a piece of paper. So look at that up if you want. We also have email marketing uh, that's available. So email marketing, I could just email these 1300 records or these auction properties directly from PropStream. So I can build a list, get your phone numbers and emails, and then send you a postcard, a voicemail, and an email. And we can do that all within about 30 minutes. And then sit back, maybe in about a next hour, maybe the next day, maybe the next three days, someone should call you back. And then that's when you search their address, like we did earlier, and then start analyzing that property. So, hey, thanks for calling me back, Heather. I see you got my voicemail. So as you may know, I am interested in buying your property. Oh, I see you guys have a mortgage. What's the current balance on your mortgage? My system shows 300,000, but you might've made extra payments. What's your balance, right? 
And then once she tells me her balance, now I can run my comparables, see if the property is worth it, and then go from there. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys understand where we fit in in the real estate world. We're just here to provide as much data as possible so you can make better decisions, right? That's ultimately the goal. So thank hey, you guys so much. Hey, Burton, you got, you, got a, you got some time to answer some questions? I do, absolutely. Awesome. I'm here for everybody. So. All right, who's got questions Stop for Bert? Share. Got somebody back there? If you could also put the uh, put the camera on him so Burton can see who he's, who's talking to. Hey there, Burton. That'd be awesome. Hey, what's going on? I uh, got a question. You said something about uh, liens, tax liens. Yes. Now, uh, tell me what properties have the tax liens. Would I be able to contact the people that's holding the liens? So I could contact. No, so the, we we will show question, you the lien records, which is a very great question, by the way. So let me just pull up a an area and show you what information we'll provide. I think that's a better question here. So if I look for liens in this area here, and you mentioned tax liens, so I'm going to specify my lien type in the lien area here. What we provide you when you go into the property details is the lien parties involved so you'll be able to see the party involved but not their contact information so you won't be able to contact the lien pro, pro, uh, holder at all you'll know who they are the issuing agency but we won't be able to give you who the lien holder is and, or the contact information yeah but usually I think... it's going to be the county the state or the federal because those are the three lien types that we collect yeah but can i look up the county or, or through the internet and, and oh, absolutely. That, yeah. So like right now, once I have this information, you can manually do it outside of PropStream. I thought you meant within PropStream. Can I? No, we don't have that information. But no, absolutely. I mean, we give you the tax number, the parties involved, the document number, the reporting date. So yeah, if I walk to the, the state's office right now, because it is the state tax lien, I can pull that record. But we just don't have that integrated within PropStream. Cool. Very cool. Who has a question? Phil's got a question. All right. Go ahead, Phil, and then we'll go to Jada. So, Burton, do you have a commercial version of this software? Um, they're actually embedded within the current software right now. So, in, in regards to commercial, uh, you would pull them up the same way you would pull up a property, as I showed you earlier. Um, you would just zoom in on a market, and let's say this looks like a commercial building right here. Uh, well, that's a prison actually, uh, but yeah, you let's click on the prison and you can pull up the information that we have on that prison. So North Carolina state of state property owns it. You can see all the other properties the state owns. So we do have commercial information here. Simply click on it or pull up the property by clicking on the parcel or address. Now, if you're going to do lead generation, like, Hey, I want to go to Dallas, Texas and find commercial potential leads. In our filter here at the top, we have a property characteristics area. And that's where you can sort out whether you want residential, commercial, office spaces, industrial, agricultural, cool. exempt properties, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the answer is yes, we have that and much more. Very impressive. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, it wasn't easy. 15 years, headaches along the way, restless nights. Yeah. Did you, <laughs> did you build you it yourself, software. Burton? Did you build it yourself? No, 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 no. But we were uh, part of the team of how it should be presented. I'm kind of the UI team, the uh, user I'm, interface. I'm teasing you. All right. Who else? Okay. Anybody? anybody? Okay. Yeah. Hi, Burton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, do you hey, have tutorials on, on um, PropStream? And if so, where could we find those? Absolutely. Great question. So if you have a subscription already, you can go to our toolbar on the left-hand side, hit the help section. There's a video library area for you. And I do weekly webinars as well. And then just recently, at no additional cost, if you go to propstream.com, we launched our free academy. Now, this is not going to teach you how to do like, like, like flip your properties. This is not going to teach you how to fill out a, this is just showing you how PropStream is intertwined in the real estate industry. So what this will introduce you is some strategies like wholesaling, just kind of overlining what that is but where our, our application fits into that whole thing. So it'll teach you how to pull a lead and so forth. So yes, we do have the support for you. Propstream.com, check out the Academy or the resource video library and our weekly webinars as well. Awesome, and you, so you guys know, if you go to 
PropStream7DaysFree.com. Sign up through there. And part of the reason they track how many we do, because Burton's going to come back here and talk to more. Talk to us some more. Yeah. So, you know, if none of you guys sign up, I'm not getting Burton on here again. You guys got it? Because, I, you know, we, if you're not interested, I'm not interested, right? Hold on. Let me just, I want to go online. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, if you can, can you see them online at all, Burton? You see oh, the, the questions, questions online? On here? I do see some questions in here. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, we had Sal who said it's a great system. He's been using it. So, we, we and this is actually just, and Damien's an ex, Damien, great presentation. I have a few requ requests, but you could write those down. I don't know if we want to talk about it. But I'm, I'm actually, let me write those down. Yeah, because those aren't really questions I can address. Those are more like great suggestions. Right. And I'm looking at that first one, and Damien, that's a really good one. So, let me go ahead and bring that one up to the team. Yeah, if you want to write that down real quick. And, and Damien, again, I want to thank you, Damien. Damien, actually, what happened was Damien called to order PropStream, and they asked him, and I don't know, they had some kind of conversation, and Damien said he went to investor schooling, and that's how they called me. They called me because he said it, and, you know, and, and I never looked at it. So when they called me, like I said, you know, these guys are great, and I really liked, and, and I really liked that. By the way, Burton, I really liked your presentation the other day, even though I cut you off 17 times, but I really liked this one today. <laughs> You know, you know, it's bottom line. Show me this. Show me that. Show me that. This is great. Okay. He's like, wow, that was fast. All right. We got another question in here. It's, yes, sir. Real quick. Uh, does PropStream cover Puerto Rico and Caribbean, you know, oh, yeah. like U.S. territories? No. Great question. Oh, Not yet. Um, wow. It's a very hard data set to collect. But no, we don't have any U.S. territory data. It's just the United States right now. All hey, right, cool. uh, Burton. Um, yes. Do you have any... Um, like text uh sms um like systems integrated with uh prop stream yet or not in this version mm, okay i don't so have you're... an eta yet on when the, the that will be made available but no we don't have it so if you are going to use any external marketing you're going to want to make sure you export and i can actually show you guys briefly where that would be at um anytime you save a list with prop stream we'll store it in the my properties area over here and we're very familiar that most of these guys will essentially want a CSV file. So you'll just click on a list that you've created, like a, I created this pandemic list. These are people that rented with a mortgage in the last two years. Just <laughs> I figured these guys probably are facing the heat right now. But once you build that list, you can check them off and then hit the export button and then upload it to an SMS um, marketing provider. But we don't have that in this current version. Gotcha, thank you. Hey, Burton. Absolutely, great question. Um, real quick, do you have any way of filtering out uh, commercial, re commercial like 100 doors or 50 doors? Oh, Unit. yeah, units. Yeah, we yeah. do have that. Um, this was something that was actually introduced about a year ago, a year and a half ago. So in our filter, that would be found under property characteristics. So let's say Dallas or let's change it up. Let's go to Miami because Miami is skyscraperville, right? But Miami filter and then you would go to property characteristics and it's here unit number range so minimum 50 doors and now it just isolate all the 50 unit uh, properties or anything with 50 plus units or more thanks mobile Absolutely. home parks can you find mobile home parks yes mobile home parks will be classified under residential oh and then property types you would go and look for mobile home parks so we awesome. actually have them in alphabetical order so click on that and Very if it's cool. not under mobile home trail parks, just click on mobile home. They'll pick up uh, manufactured modular home could be another reason why. So you just got to make sure you choose all the right categories. Otherwise, it won't populate. So every, every, every time I ask a question, you have you have the right answer. It's awesome, man. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that. But I mean, we're not perfect. I'm sure you're going to figure something out. We're like, oh, you guys don't have that. Gotcha, Burton. Right. But. I'll be the first to say we're not perfect, but we're very aggressive at collecting data, even if it's redundant. Even if two providers have the exact same data, we'll buy it just so we can double check. But um, yeah, no, I mean, suggestions, complaints, compliments, we'd love to hear it. Uh, we're the first to say we're not perfect, but we're here because of investors like you guys. All these suggestions, like what Damien has brought to the table, are things that make us better each and every day. So thank you guys for the compliments, the complaints. It helps us get better at the end of the day. Uh, we, we have Bart, for, one for more. Two. We have time for two more. What's up, Scott? Um, can can the searches be more than just uh, one city? It's like if I'm looking for commercial properties on the East Coast, 
Can I search that way, or do I have to go New York, Boston, DC? Yeah, for this current state, our server right now can't handle large searches like that. Um, in the very near future, don't have an ETA, that will be accommodated. We're trying to allow statewide searches, but right now, excuse me, it's only uh, the highest level search that you can perform is county, followed by city, followed by up to five zip codes, so one or up to five. And then we have this draw search feature on the map. It's located at the top left of the map, but it's more designed for like a local environment. So no statewide searches or multiple county searches right now. Thank you. Very cool. We got, Very time, cool. Question. We got time for one more. Anybody else? Anybody online want to raise their hand and ask a question? There's a lot of line. Um, let's see if we got something that... Uh, so Stan, just so you know, yes, this will be recorded. Sharita, yes, I assume it can be. Uh, we can use this for vacant land, right? Burton? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, uh, again good. within the. Um, All right. Just to show, okay. it, we actually have its own category. It would be the vacant land quick list choices. Click right. on that, and here you go, vacant land, like that one we're staring at right there. <laughs> so somebody asked that's about auctions. Construction. Somebody asked about auctions and what kind of auctions they can identify. By the way, why don't you oh, so put on a. Why don't we put on Will for internet and let him ask this question? Got it. Will are you there? You got, him, you got him ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, just wanted to know, do you, does it also do storage units? What, what was that? Storage? Oh, yeah, storage units. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, wow. That's something that you have to look into our property characteristics. I believe that's under commercial. So click commercial and then. Here's the thing, when, when you choose a classification, so when I choose residential, your property type will reflect residential options. So you said storage, that would be under commercial. And so by clicking on that, I would get the commercial options. You see how the residentials went away. And so that would fall under, I believe, storage, uh, where are you, mini warehouse storage right here. Okay. So may not have it in Miami. Let me check another market. It may not be available in every market. And the reason for that is labeling. Not every county labels it exactly that. Some counties just call it commercial. So you might just have to look at the entire pool, but like in Fulton County, they actually are labeling it mini warehouse. And you see how when I went to Miami, Florida, they don't have any labels under that. So that's why it went under no matching results found. But that doesn't necessarily mean we don't have any commercial because when you uncheck that, here's everything. There's wholesale outlets, franchise discounts, stores and apartments. Just every county is different. So you have to play, let's check off all the ones that apply and see if I can find them. That's the answer. So yes, we have storage units. Hopefully all you need to do is just go to commercial for classification and check off the um, mini warehouse storage. And that's pretty much it. But again, I'm saying that with hesitancy because no two counties label properties the same. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Absolutely. Great question. Excellent, man. All right. So if you guys want to do this, you guys know what to do. Burton, you are awesome. Everybody give Burton a hand. <laughs> You're awesome, man.